Hi folks, I've been watching some uh, debates on uh, YouTube just lately uh, with a man called William Lane Craig. If, you, if you're interested in watching uh, William Craig debate with atheists, go onto YouTube, do a search for William Lane Craig, I will put his name up on the screen, and you'll find some very, very interesting debates if you're interested in that kind of thing. Uh, William Craig is a formidable opponent of atheism and most atheists these days are frightened to death of debating with him because he's so formidable. In fact, sometime this year William Craig is at uh, Cambridge University and he has offered to debate with Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins has refused to go because quite frankly he's afraid of William Craig. He's such a formidable opponent of atheism. And Craig argues that there is uh, sufficient evidence that there might be a God. There is sufficient evidence that there might be. He's not saying he can prove the existence of God, but there is sufficient evidence that there uh, might be a God. The atheists, on the other hand, always, uh, no matter what they argue, they always resort to uh, angry outbursts of how God, if there is a God, he must be a monster and they always resort to the argument, why is there so much suffering? This is the baseline of their argument and they always resort to this. Why is there so much suffering in the world if there is a loving God? Of course, at this point, the atheists never really admit that uh, we might bear some of the fault for the suffering in the world today. I mean, we ruin the environment and then we blame God when natural catastrophes occur. We create faster ways of travel uh, and then blame God when the train is derailed. Uh, we kill and maim one another right across the earth. This is taking place right now. And then we shake an angry fist at God uh, because of what is taking place. So atheists will always blame God for what is taking place, for the negative things. They will not give him credit for the good things that happen, but they will always blame him for the bad things that happen. There are five points that Craig will argue uh, with the atheists and I've written them on the blackboard. I hope you can uh, read the writing. If not, I'll have to put them on the screen afterwards. But his argument is that God is the best explanation for the origin of the universe. He's not the only explanation, but he's the best explanation. Then he argues that God is the best explanation for the fine tuning of the universe. If you don't understand the fine, fine tuning, it's simply that if we were any closer to the sun than what we are, we would all burn. If we're any closer away, uh, we would freeze to death. So, uh, and also, uh, there are always four seasons that follow every year. The day follows the night, the night follows the day. These are the fine tunings of the universe that he argues that God is the best explanation for these five fine tunings. And then he uh, argues that God is the best uh, explanation for objective moral values. For example, when we look at our politicians who are sp supposed to rule uh, our countries, our various countries, can we honestly say that these men are fit to make objective moral values? Of course they're not. A lot of them are corrupt, a lot of them uh, have affairs with other people's wives, uh, and uh, some create wars and some kill people. So these men are not fit to create objective moral values. No man is. It requires a, a superior being, someone who is uh, perfect and is in a position to create moral objective values. And so this is one of the things that Craig will argue. And then uh, God is the best explanation for the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. If God didn't send this man Jesus into the world to do what he did uh, with the powers that he obviously had, raising the dead, healing the sick, casting out demons, and then submitted himself to a cruel death from which he rose from the dead and he showed himself to 500 witnesses. So if there was no God, <laughs> what would have been the purpose of Jesus Christ? And then Craig argues that God can be experienced. And I know, if you've seen my testimony, I know that God can be experienced. I have actually experienced God for myself. 
Many of you watching this will have experienced God for yourself. God can be experienced. And so these are some of the uh, arguments that Craig will argue against the atheists for which there really is uh, no adequate answer. Most of the atheists, as I said previously in this talk, they will resort to, well, it must be a monster or something when you look at all the suffering in the world. Uh, when you see little children that are dying, how can there be a loving God? And, and these are the arguments that they resort to. Well, no one can argue for God on this level. Only God can argue for himself. And one day, of course, he will do. And uh, my uh, desire right now is to say to you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal saviour, all you've got to do is ask. As Craig argues, God can be experienced. If you call out with sincerity in your heart and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life and help me to follow you. And you must have a desire to follow him. It's not just a quick uh, one decision, Lord, come into my heart. It's a case of wanting to follow Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, and to obey him and to be faithful to him. Then we will experience Jesus for ourselves. God bless you folks. Have a wonderful week. Have a look around the site. Hope there's something there to bless you. Bye for now. Thank you.